72 tunnels, 851 kilometers underground, and a staggering $50 billion. This is what it takes to build a railway through the Himalayas. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway. It is one of the most ambitious and controversial infrastructure projects of our time. The Himalayas have long been a natural barrier, but China's new railway project aims to change that. And we're taking a closer look at this railway project, a $50 billion investment that's bridging gaps and raising questions. How will this massive infrastructure project impact the region? Let's find out in this video. But before we dive into the details, please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for future updates. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway is a 1,012-mile or 1,629-kilometer-long railway line being built in one of the most challenging terrains in the world. It will connect Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province, to Lhasa, the capital of Tibet. That's about the distance from New York City to Miami. Currently, it takes about 48 hours to travel from Chengdu to Lhasa. But once this railway is completed, that journey will be reduced to just 13 hours. This project is being built in segments, some of which are already operational. The first segment, from Chengdu to Yan, opened on December 28, 2018. Then, on June 25, 2021, the Ningqi to Lhasa segment started operations. It's the first electrified railway in Tibet and the first high-speed rail on the Tibetan plateau. The final and most challenging segment from Yan to Ningchi is expected to be completed around 2030. This might seem like a long time, but considering the challenges involved, it's actually pretty impressive. This isn't just any railway. It's a high elevation railway that will traverse the Tibetan plateau, often called the roof of the world. We're talking about building tracks at altitudes where the air is so thin, you'd be gasping for breath just standing still. Special trains, called China Railway CR 200J Fuxing Series train sets run on this line. They are specially designed to handle the high altitudes and challenging conditions of the Tibetan Plateau. The trains are equipped with both diffusion and distributed oxygen systems to help alleviate passengers' altitude sickness. Let's talk about the elevation for a second. This railway has to deal with an elevation difference of 3,000 meters. That's nearly 10,000 feet. The starting point in the Sichuan Basin is only about 300 meters above sea level. By the time you reach Lhasa, you're at 3,000 meters. In fact, 90% of the railway runs at an altitude of more than 3,000 meters. Some sections of the track will be built at elevations higher than the summit of Mont Blanc, the highest peak in Western Europe. To give you an idea of the scale of this project, the railway will include 72 tunnels with a total length of 851 kilometers, or 528 miles. That's more than half of the entire railway line. The longest of these is the Yigong Tunnel, stretching for an incredible 42.5 kilometers, 26 miles. It's longer than the Channel Tunnel connecting England and France, which is considered one of the seven wonders of the modern world. The Ningchi segment alone required the construction of 47 tunnels and 121 bridges, crossing the Yarlung Tsangpo River Valley 16 times. But it's not just the altitude that's a challenge. The engineers are dealing with extreme temperatures and permafrost. Imagine trying to build a stable railway line on ground that's frozen most of the year, but turns to mush during the brief summer. It's like trying to build a sandcastle on a beach as the tide comes in, only much, much harder. The temperature variations in this region can be extreme, ranging from scorching hot in the summer to bitterly cold in the winter. The engineers have to design tracks and structures that can withstand these massive temperature swings without warping or cracking. And let's not forget about the seismic activity in the region. The Himalayas are a geologically active area, prone to earthquakes. Building a railway that can withstand potential tremors adds another layer of complexity to an already challenging project. The engineers are using cutting-edge technology and innovative design solutions to ensure the railway can withstand whatever nature throws at it. Different construction techniques have had to be adapted for the unique conditions. For example, the Millen Tunnel, which is 10 kilometers long, lies 1,200 meters below a mountain range 
and has an average altitude of 3,100 meters above sea level. A one-of-a-kind, world's largest and most powerful TBM designed specifically for this project will be used. We've already discussed this incredible machine in a previous video. I will include a link to that video. Be sure to check it out. But why go through all this trouble? Well, the potential economic benefits are huge. This railway is set to be a game changer for Tibet's economy, potentially transforming one of China's least developed regions into a bustling hub of activity. It's going to dramatically improve connectivity between Tibet and central and eastern China. This means faster and cheaper transportation of goods, which could lead to a boom in trade. Tourism is another big factor. Tibet is already a popular destination for its breathtaking landscapes and unique culture. With easier access, we could see a surge in tourism, bringing in more money to local communities. We're talking about potentially millions of new visitors each year. This could lead to a boom in the hospitality industry, creating jobs in hotels, restaurants, and tour companies. But of course, this comes with its own set of challenges, which we'll get to in a bit. The railway could also open up access to Tibet's mineral resources. The region is rich in copper, iron, and rare earth elements, which are crucial for many modern technologies. These minerals are essential for everything from electric car batteries to wind turbines. Easier transportation could make mining these resources more economically viable, potentially turning Tibet into a key player in the global supply chain for these critical materials. All of this could lead to a significant boost in Tibet's GDP and living standards. The Chinese government has emphasized that this project is part of its efforts to alleviate poverty in the region. They're hoping that improved infrastructure will attract more investment, create jobs, and ultimately raise the standard of living for Tibetans. Some economists predict that the railway could help double Tibet's GDP in the coming decades. That's a huge change for a region that has historically been one of China's poorest. But hold on, before we get too excited about all these significant economic benefits, we need to talk about the significant environmental concerns surrounding this project, which are causing a lot of worry among environmentalists and local communities. Tibet's ecosystem is incredibly fragile. It's often called the Third Pole because it contains the largest reserve of fresh water outside the polar regions. The region is home to unique species like the snow leopard, the Tibetan antelope, and the black-necked crane. Many of these species are already endangered, and the construction of the railway and the increased human activity it will bring could disrupt wildlife habitats and migratory routes. There's also the issue of pollution. More tourists mean more waste, and in a region with limited infrastructure for waste management, this could become a serious problem. We've seen this happen in other popular tourist destinations, beautiful natural areas becoming littered with plastic bottles and other trash. And let's not forget about the carbon emissions from all those trains and the increased industrial activity. While trains are generally more environmentally friendly than cars or planes, they still produce emissions, especially if they're not using clean energy sources. The construction process itself is also a concern. Building tunnels and bridges in this pristine environment could lead to habitat destruction and increased erosion. There's also the risk of contaminating local water sources, which could have devastating effects on both wildlife and human communities that depend on these water sources. The Chinese government has promised to implement strict environmental protection measures, but many environmentalists remain skeptical. It's a classic case of development versus conservation, and finding the right balance won't be easy. Some argue that the economic benefits outweigh the environmental costs, while others say that preserving Tibet's unique ecosystem should be the top priority. What do you think? Is it possible to have both development and environmental protection, or do we always have to choose one over the other? Now, let's talk about the people. The social and cultural impact of this railway could be profound. Tibet has a unique culture that has developed over thousands of years in relative isolation. The railway could change that dramatically, and not everyone is happy about it. On one hand, improved connectivity 
could bring better access to education and healthcare for Tibetans. On one hand, improved connectivity could bring better access to education and healthcare for Tibetans. Students might find it easier to attend universities in other parts of China, broadening their horizons and opportunities. Patients could more easily reach specialized medical facilities, potentially saving lives. This could be particularly important for people in remote areas who currently have limited access to these services. But on the other hand, there are concerns about what some call the sinicization of Tibet. The railway could lead to an increased influx of Han Chinese migrants and tourists, potentially overwhelming the local Tibetan population. Some worry that this could lead to a dilution of Tibetan culture and way of life. Another aspect to consider is the potential for economic disparities. While the railway could bring economic opportunities, there's a risk that most of the benefits could go to newcomers or large corporations rather than local Tibetans. This has happened in other rapidly developing regions regions, where locals sometimes feel left behind by the pace of change. Now, let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture. This railway isn't just about economics or culture, it's also about geopolitics. And let me tell you, it's as complicated as a game of three-dimensional chess. For China, the railway is of huge strategic importance. It will give Beijing much tighter control over Tibet, a region that has seen tensions and unrest in the past. The railway will allow for faster deployment of security forces if needed. However, China's neighbors, particularly India, are concerned about this development. India and China have long-standing border disputes in the Himalayan region. India worries that this railway could give China a military advantage in the area. There's also the question of how this railway might affect the balance of power in the broader region. Could it be used to extend China's influence further into South Asia? Some analysts think it could be part of China's larger Belt and Road Initiative, which aims to create a modern-day Silk Road connecting Asia, Europe, and Africa. Africa. And let's not forget about the potential impact on international trade routes. If this railway eventually connects to networks in other countries, it could reshape global trade patterns. Goods that currently travel by sea might start moving overland, potentially bypassing traditional maritime choke points like the Strait of Malacca. So, what do Tibetans themselves think about all this? Well, it's complicated, opinions are mixed, and it's important to note that it can be difficult to get a full picture due to restrictions on free speech in the region. Some some Tibetans are excited about the economic opportunities the railway could bring. Others are more skeptical, worried about losing their land and resources to outside interests. The Chinese government, for its part, is all in on this project. They emphasize the development and poverty, alleviation aspects, arguing that the railway will bring prosperity to one of China's poorest regions. They point to the success of the Qinghai-Tibet Railway, completed in 2006, as evidence that such projects can boost local economies. They also claim that they're taking environmental concerns seriously, promising to implement strict protection measures. This includes things like wildlife corridors to allow animals to safely cross the tracks and measures to prevent permafrost degradation. However, as we discussed earlier, many environmentalists remain skeptical about how effective these measures will be. And of course, they stress the strategic importance of the project for national integration. From Beijing's perspective, better connecting Tibet to the rest of China is crucial for maintaining stability and unity. They see infrastructure development as a key tool for nation building. They are also proud of the engineering feats involved in building a railway in such challenging conditions, seeing it as a demonstration of China's growing technological prowess. And of course, neighboring countries are paying close attention to the geopolitical implications. As we mentioned earlier, India is particularly concerned about the military implications. However, other countries in the region are also watching closely and wondering how this might shift regional dynamics. So, what does the future hold for the Sichuan-Tibet Railway? Well, well, if all goes according to plan, by 2030, we could see trains zipping across the Tibetan plateau at speeds that would have seemed impossible just a few decades ago. There's potential for further expansion of Tibet's railway network, connecting more remote areas and potentially even extending to neighboring countries. But the challenges won't end when construction is complete. Maintaining a high elevation railway in such harsh conditions will be an ongoing battle against nature. The extreme temperatures, thin air, and unstable ground will continue to pose challenges long after the first trains start running. As we've seen, the Sichuan-Tibet Railway is much more than just a transportation project. 
It's a complex web of economic, environmental, cultural, and geopolitical issues. It's a project that forces us to grapple with some big questions. Ultimately, the success of this project will depend on how well these competing interests can be balanced. Can the economic benefits be realized without sacrificing the environment or Tibetan culture? Can regional tensions be managed? Only time will tell. One thing's for sure, the Sichuan-Tibet Railway is a project that will shape the future of Tibet, China, and the entire Himalayan region for decades to come. It's a story we'll be watching closely in the years ahead. And that's it for today's video. As always, thanks for watching.